and Television Dude here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about Genesis games that I owned originally when I first bought my Genesis back in the 90s, and games that I have yet to repurchase, and maybe I'll tell stories about games I rented and other things. And uh, I bought my Genesis originally back around the winter of 93 because I bought my first Game Pro magazine in around November or December of 93. Probably December. Because as soon as I bought my Genesis, I started buying the video game magazines. Game Pro, EGM, who knows what else. But unfortunately for me, I did something stupid and when the PlayStation came out, I was in the mindset that I should just upgrade Sell the sell the my Genesis and games to get money f towards the PlayStation because the PlayStation looked awesome. So you know I had to have that. And I at, at the time I wasn't playing my Genesis games anymore. They were just sitting in a bag. Plus I was going, I was in a relationship, and when you're in a relationship, y your games kind of get put on hold, and you know that's just how that stuff goes. But anyway. Here are some of the games I owned from back in the day. Shadowrun, which is a great, great game. I, I was actually able to beat this back in the day. I haven't put towards the effort of beating it now since I rebought it. <clears throat> but it's a great, great, uh, kind of like a cyberpunk, futuristic, role-playing game. But it's an action RPG. Bulls. Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs. It's it's a very slow-paced game by today's standards. The characters move pretty slow, but what was, what was so awesome back then was the dunks. If you stood in the right place at the right time by the rim and you hit hit the jump button just right, your player could do an animated dunk. And at the time, at the time that was just awesome. Gauntlet 4 this was a difficult game. I believe I couldn't beat it until I bought myself a Game Genie. And uh, I believe I did have to cheat and get the Game Genie because I couldn't beat it myself. There was pretty much four uh, in Gauntlet 4. It's almost like a Gauntlet RPG. There's like four towers. You have to beat all four towers and then unlocks the main tower. Each tower has a dragon to fight and the main tower has the main dragon to fight. And you can upgrade your uh, your robe, your if you're the wizard, your robe, uh, your spells, your armor, or whatever, your weapons. And I and I believe it has the arcade version of a uh, gauntlet as a bonus in the game as well. NFL Football '94, starring Joe Montana. I loved this game back then. Because I was really getting into football at the time, you know, I was from Detroit. I used Barry Sanders all the time. Pretty sure Barry was in here. Yeah, he's right on the back. The game and uh, I, I may have put the game on easy mode, but I was just having fun anyway. I like easy games. I was going for uh, most yards, <laughs> most yards rushing, most yards passing, just having a blast. I'm one of those kind of guys that I don't, some games, I don't care that the game uh, is too easy. You know, I don't care that the game is not challenging enough. I like easy. Road Rash 2. The only Road Rash game I owned back then. I think I contemplating contemplated getting uh, Road Rash 3, but never did. Road Rash 2 is a great game. Some people debate on Road Rash 1 or 2 is the better game. I've always heard that Road Rash 2 is better, but lately I've been hearing a lot of people saying Road Rash 1 is better. I was never good enough to actually beat the game, to go through every single track and get first place. I, w I was never that good. I kind of just played for fun. The best part about this game was playing two-player with a friend and unlocking the the ultimate bike which I can't remember the name of the ultimate bike at the moment but the bike was just so fast it was ridiculously fast 
so fast that you would fly off the screen. And if you'd crash and your player, your, your guy would fly for like a mile or two. It was just so funny. Flashback, the quest for identity. Another epic game from back in the day. I was actually able to beat this back then as well. It did take me quite a, quite a bit to do it though. This was unique for its time. It's uh, the quest for identity. Planet Titan, New Washington. I know one, one place you had to get jobs. I, I don't remember the game completely. It was a very difficult game. But I beat it. So I was impressed in that. Today people are got mixed opinions on it. Some people still think it's a great game. Other people think it's a little bit overrated and didn't age well. Tough Man Contest. The, 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 the magazines gave this good reviews. People recently think it's just a punch-out knockoff. But I like this game. I was be able to beat this back in the day as well. I don't know if I could beat it today. It would take a lot of skill, a lot of concentrating, a lot of s skills that I don't have today, a lot of patience that I don't have today that I did back then. So, you know, it, it is a great boxing game. Really, really great. Sonic 2, the game that came with my Genesis. Th I spent a lot of time on this game. I was mesmerized when I got my Genesis and I was playing this game. The graphics, everything, it was unreal. I couldn't believe what I was playing and what I was seeing for real when I, when I first got this game. So I, I didn't buy a, a, another game right away. I, I think I spent a good week or two on this game before I purchased anything else. It took me quite a while to beat it. I was stuck for a while. This was a huge accomplishment when I beat this game. Huge. It is still in my top five. Uh, well, no, I can't say top five anymore. I'll say my top ten games of all time that I've ever played. NHL 94. The amount of hours I put into this game is unreal. I loved this game so much back in the day. I was a huge hockey fan. And of course I would play without rules. No uh, icing. Well, I, actually I think icing may have still been in the game. I think that may have been automatic. I can't remember. But no penalties. No crossing the line crap. It was just all out hockey. And there was no fights in this one. Even though... Uh, some magazines back in the day, and even some internet sites still to this day are mis misquoted and mis and, and printed wrong information saying this version had fights in it when it did not. But but you could injure another player though. But some people still consider this one of the greatest hockey games of all time. Some still some say 95, 96, 93. But, any, but 94 is usually the general consensus of the best hockey game of all time. Aladdin. The graphics were just epic for this game. They were bright, colorful. It was really good. But uh, I've heard a lot of people say how easy this game is recently. Oh, this game was so easy. I beat it without much trouble. Well, I guess I suck at games, because I was never able to beat it. <laughs> I was never good at platform games. I did like the game, though, but I sucked at it. Uh. Street Fighter II Special Championship Edition. This is one of the games that I played in a kiosk, in probably like a Kmart or something, that made me want to get a Genesis. And I think at the time I had no idea that this game was on the Super Nintendo. I thought maybe it was just a Genesis game. I did not know. But I pl played it for a couple minutes in a kiosk and fell in love with the game. And I think that's one of the reasons I did buy the Genesis. Pretty sure. Mortal Kombat. 
what else can you say? It's Mortal Kombat. You, you, and then one of the magazines, they told me how to unlock the the blood. And I think uh, the magazines also taught me how to do the fatalities. And great game. It was uh, graphically, they say, not as good as the Super Nintendo version. But this new Super Nintendo didn't have blood, so. Can't really say much about about it, but it's just a great game. Sunset Riders. Was I, am I even holding these up far enough? I'm not even sure. Uh, I liked it. It was just a basic shooter game. It was a western. You you shooting his shooting the enemies on the screen, and they some I I have heard that the Super Nintendo version is better. Haven't played it. I I might try to get a hold of it someday. Miss Pac-Man. Uh, really not much to say, but it's Miss Pac-Man. The, the only part that sucks about it is the scrolling screen, where the where you got to scroll up to see everything. NBA Jam. What I don't remember is did I own NBA Jam or did I own NBA Jam term, Tournament Edition? That I don't remember. Great basketball game. I think I got bored with it after a while, but it was pretty good. I wasn't the best at it. Cyborg Justice. A game I don't know if... Uh, I have mixed opinions on. Part of me says it was halfway decent and I had some fun with it. Part of me says the game was boring and lackluster. So, it, it, you're, uh, you're robots and you're, you're a robot and you're fighting other robots. There was some cool aspects to it, like yanking the arms in legs and torsos off the other players. Columns. Who doesn't own who didn't own Columns? It was a puzzle game. Great game. Probably one of the best underrated baseball games of all time. Super Baseball 2020. I also own it for the Super Nintendo. I can't really tell you which one's better, but this is the one I rented uh, I owned back in the day. Not rented, I owned back in the day. You get a baseball team you you upgrade their armor. I, I think you can upgrade the armor on everybody. I'm not sure on that. I always played as the robots. I think there was some human players too. Very cool. Games that I owned back in the day that I have not repurchased. Let's see. No, let, let's put up some games so there's something to look at while I'm talking. Let's see here. Splatterhouse 3. Probably number one on my want list. That, as far as I'm concerned, of any Genesis game I have ever played, ever, Splatterhouse 3 had the best intro of any game I've ever seen. Graphically, it was spooky, it was eerie, and it was just unreal. And at the time, I would brag and try to sh uh, and show people and how great the intro was, uh, you know, for Genesis anyway. Back then, it was out of this world. I think I own Shinobi 3. I owned one of the Shinobi games. I didn't like it. I sucked at it. I bought it because of its reputation, but I didn't like it. Outrun 2019. It was pretty good. I wasn't the best at it, but I did like some of the uh, tracks. I liked the track where you would jump from one platform to another. I think what I want to own now is the original Outrun. I never owned the original Outrun, so I'd like to have both. Earthworm Jim, a game that I thought was pretty darn cool back in the day, but I was never able to beat it. Oh, I forgot a couple games. Oh, hold on one second here. I gotta come over here. I forgot to show off two games that I owned back in the day. They were off on the side. I forgot to put them in the video. Lost Vikings. I, you know, I was never able to beat this. I got to the last level and I just couldn't get past it. It was one of those levels where it was three levels in one and you couldn't die once. And the level was difficult as hell and I wasn't able to beat it. I believe that was going to be the end of the game. A three levels in one. Uh, 
but it was a great game, great puzzle adventure game. And Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron. I was able to beat this back in the day. I was able to beat it. And uh, this game was psychedelic, it was funky, and it was great. I did have this boxed, and foolish me, I think I sold it. But I may have sold it for a good reason. I did trade it to somebody, I believe. And I believe it, it must have been a good reason, because I must have been getting something good, or there must have been a good reason for it. Maybe I was needing money to pay a bill, or maybe I was getting an Intellivision game. But I would like to get this uh, boxed again someday. I won't say it was foolish of me to sell it, but I'm just surprised that I sold it. Let's see here. Yes, I was able to beat Splatterhouse back in the day, too. And I was able to beat it in, in the quickest time to get the best ending, too. And where was I? Earthworm Jim. Yes. I was a Sega fanboy back in the day, only because I only owned a Sega. I think that was the only reason. You, you're kind of biased when that's the only system you own. So I was happy when uh, the reviews would come up in the uh, EGM or GamePro Game of the Year and Earthworm Jim was number one, even though Super Nintendo still trumped it with Donkey Kong Country. I was kind of kind of mad about that, but hey. <laughs> Fantasy Star 3, a game that I was so confused over when I owned that back in the day. I, I sucked at that game so bad that I couldn't get past the beginning of the game. I, I guess the trick was that you were supposed to scroll off towards the side of the screen and I think there was some girl hiding by, hiding somewhere and you had to talk to her. And I was too stupid to figure that out back in the day. So I, I paid like 60 bucks for Fantasy Star 3 and I never got anywhere in the game. <laughs> Zombies Ate My Neighbors. That game was great. I wasn't, I wasn't able to beat it. The game just kept going on forever and ever and ever. I eventually just got ran out of lives, got stuck. The game just was just getting more difficult and difficult. I'm not sure if I would have ever been able to beat that game. That game just... But the game was a blast. <laughs> that game was a blast. Really, really was a blast. It's just, it just kept getting more difficult. and uh, I did own a Major League Baseball game. I'm not sure which one. Maybe it was just called Major League Baseball. Maybe it had a year next to it. I don't remember. I ended up not really liking it. Pebble Beach Golf Links. Uh, another game that I didn't think was all that great. Wasn't one of the better golf games I had ever played. And one that I'm not sure about was if I owned an NBA Live or not. Maybe I just rented NBA Live, or maybe I bought NBA Live. Or maybe neither. I just don't remember. Let me get a drink real quick. I'm just going to mention some other games. Uh, Skitchen. It was like a, uh, it was almost like a, almost like a sister game to the Road Rush games. I always wanted it back in the day. It was, it was like Road Rush, but it was like on, what was it, what was it, Rollerblades, or? I don't, don't think it was Skateboard. But I, I finally bought it within the last couple of years, but I never really played it much. Not much more than th just to try it out. Altered Beast. This was, I believe, the first game I had ever seen on the Genesis, in, in a kiosk. And I believe it, it was a store that was similar to, like, what, what would be like a Kohl's today. I'm not sure if it was Kohl's or if it was the store before Kohl's took the store over. But it was just like Kohl's, it was just clothing, but it had a small electronics section. And they had like a Genesis hooked up, right right, right when the Genesis first came out. So I, I wanted a Genesis for quite some time before I finally bought it. In Altered Beast was the first game I had ever seen. So it was still a couple years before I finally bought a Genesis, but... I was, I was impressed with what I saw, and I still don't own the game, still today. I think, uh, yeah, I, I rented Cool Spot, and I didn't like it. I rented Sonic 1, and I sucked at it for some reason. I was I was pretty good at Sonic 2, but I was never good at Sonic 1. Go figure. 
And I, I, I have it now, but I need need to give it some more tr uh, playthrough because I still suck at it. I rented Ta Taz Escape from Mars. I thought the game was difficult. I was never able to get too far in it. But I was impressed with the graphics and the gameplay. I just wasn't really good at it. I, re I think I rented Sonic 3 too, but I didn't get too far in it because I thought it was more difficult than Sonic 2. So I, I kind of gave up. I rented Sonic and Knuckles. I don't think I actually played the actual game Sonic and Knuckles that's on the game. I pretty much bought it so I could unlock Knuckles and Sonic 2 since that was the only Sonic game I owned. So I think I did end up beating, beating Sonic 2 with Knuckles back then anyway. And I thought that was pretty damn cool. I need to do that now since I have it again. Uh, just the other day when we was at the bookstore I passed up on James Pond for the Genesis. I was kind of I only passed it up because I didn't have a lot of money that day. But but if it's still there next time I go, I might pick it up. I've heard some good things in those James Pond games. Okay, here's a game I don't remember if I bought or if I just rented. And it's Jurassic Park. I ended up not liking it either way. It was better to play with the Raptor, of course, but I still sucked at the game and I never got far. Dracula. A game I almost bought. I just wanted to mention it because I almost bought it. And I almost bought it just on, on an impulse just because of Dracula. Because I like, you know, horror and I like Dracula. And I'm probably glad I didn't buy it because I heard the game wasn't all that great. A game I wanted but never bought was Mortal Kombat 2. You know, who, who wouldn't want Mortal Kombat 2? Come on. It's Mortal Kombat and violence and fatalities. I wanted it, but I never got it. I have it now, but I haven't played much of it. Primal Rage. A game I wanted back in the day and never bought. And I still don't think I own it. I just thought it looked cool. It's Mortal Kombat with dinosaurs. You know, back then it sounded awesome. I think I think people did say the game kind of sucked and it wasn't all that great. So maybe it's, maybe it's a good thing I didn't buy it. Clay Fighter. I almost bought Clay Fighter. I never did. I just thought it looked cool. It, it, it was kind of like, almost like, uh, almost like cell animation? Or is it not cell animation? But it was just, it just looked cool. The characters looked cool. I ended up, ended up never getting it. I always wanted the Strike games. Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, Urban Strike. And I never ended up getting any. Uh, just recently I got Desert Strike. And I don't like it, so maybe it's a good thing I did not get those back then. Not my kind of game. Uh, Vector Man. Uh, that's a game that came out way in the late of the Genesis. Late life of the Genesis. I don't know if it came out after or before I sold my Genesis. But I was always interested in it. I don't know if I own one now or not. I don't know. I did rent Virtual, virtual Racing. Because all the rage, you know, uh, Virtual Racing is coming out, Sega 2X is coming out, and, you know, Virtual Racing might be what's, what what games on the 32X might look like. So I had to rent it, and I was not impressed. I did want a 32X back in the day, I really did. You know, I had my Genesis, I was like, what do I want to do? Do I want to get a 32X, or do I want to get a Saturn? It's like, if I get a Saturn then I can't play my Genesis games on it. I'll have to get two different systems, but if I get a 32X, I can still play my Genesis games without having to get a whole new system, and it'll be cheaper. Because, you know, actually back in the day, the magazines made it sound like, oh, the 32X will be just as powerful as the Saturn, and you won't have to buy the Saturn. You'll just have to buy an add-on for your Genesis. So they, they, were, they really made it sound good. I ended up not getting either, and I didn't end up getting a Sony PlayStation. But it's just funny how that happened, you know. Another game I always wanted was uh, one of the Mickey Mouse games. Maybe World of Illusion, Castle of Illusion, and I ended up never getting any of them. I, I think now I have Mickey Mania. I'm not sure if that was the good one or not. I can't remember. But finally, finally I got one. 
games that I never bought back in the day, which are, which are classics, are Streets of Rage, Contra, and Castlevania. I don't think I even knew they existed back then, if I'm going to be honest. And I think that's everything here. I spent 25 minutes on this video. I might do a similar video for the uh, television, just m telling stories. You know, uh, also back then, uh, I didn't get too much uh, chances to play two-player Genesis games back then. I, 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 w I was lucky enough to play some games with a cousin of mine a couple times, maybe two or three times, and that was pretty much it. The Genesis was pretty much a single-player system for me. And television, NES, Atari, I, I played a lot of two-player. I was lucky enough to have a friend play two-player. And when I got uh, my PlayStation 64, I was lucky enough to have a roommate, and I got to play some games with him. For, for the Genesis, though, it was a time where I was pretty much just playing by myself. Kind of sucked, but well, that's just what, pretty much what I do now, play by myself. I don't really mind it. But sometimes you you, you kind of wish that you did have someone to play with. But I, th I think I've always been a loner when it comes to playing games, especially lately. But I, yeah, I think this video is going on damn too long, so I guess I'm going to end it right here. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.